Would you like to state your name for the record? Peter Huo. Um, testifying for myself. I've just got about, you've heard all this stuff, right? I think about 10 or 15 times already. If not, 150. Um, anyway, I think everybody should register or no one registers. You're selectively discriminating against the GMO people. And I think, um, I think that's point one. No one registers or everyone registers. So that's point one. Um, since May, number two, you've cost the papaya industry about $10,000 a week, about a quarter of a million dollars. Just when we were growing that market, and everybody talks about the, can, um, you know, well, that's point two. Um, we know the Kauai, the Kauai bill is legally flawed. I think there was 39 pages or, or something to that effect that I read about. Um, and point three, the council never gave us a cost of this bill yet. The Kauai bill is about $1.25 million. And this registering stuff, you know, we're all just going to have a secretary and, oh, and here's our form for where we register. It's a lot more detailed than that. So you haven't given us a cost of that. And uh, the next point is, um, it's kind of sad that you didn't go to the farmers and ranchers before you took up this huge bill. I mean, by huge, I mean it's not seven people testifying on a small item. You've taken the most ambitious legislation that we're facing in today's um, society, and you nine people are going to make a judgment about that. I don't. That's a hard. That's a hard call. But um, you're going to have to make that call. I think it would have been better up to the EPA, the FDA, and, and uh, USDA to make. You know, they're, they're the governing bodies on that. This is the lowest level of government. Thank you, sir. Can I summarize? Very quickly. Go ahead. Um, it's just said you never talked to the farmers. Okay. Thank and you. Go ahead, Judy. Good afternoon, County Council. I am Judy Hull, and I oppose Bill Number 113. I have five college degrees. Three of them are in science, and our family has been in agriculture, commer commercial agriculture, on the Big Island for over 25 years. I still don't call myself a biotechnology expert. We rely on our university to educate us. I have patiently sat in this room and listened to public testimony and council discussions for almost six months. We have taken time away from our jobs, businesses, and families to help protect the rights of our farmers, ranchers, nurserymen, and dairies. We are being attacked by a small, hostile group of loud, arrogant, intolerant activists who believe it is their mission to damage and destroy the biotechnology industry. There has been no commercial organic uh, farmers that are certified that have lost their certification because of GMOs. People can choose to shop at the organic food stores. We don't take that away from them. There is only 93 certified organic farms on, in the whole state of Hawaii and there is only 293 acres in production of organic farmers. They say they cannot coexist with us, but we have two and a half million acres on this island alone. Why can't they coexist with us? So far, the GMO farmers have been harassed, shamed, terrorized, and financially damaged by these many months of bills, amendments, and testimonies. There have been slanderous quotes of fear have been printed in the media casting doubts on uh, the safety of eating our papayas. Remember, this is not a court of law, so people can say whatever they want without consequences. But the council must rise above the mudslinging and present a calm, informed, factual, and legal legislation. We have volunteered our time to help inform the council, but instead we have been ridiculed by hostile activists. Thank you. That was two minutes. Thank you so much. Okay. Please vote no. Thank you. Okay. Um, back to Kona. Two more testifiers, please. Okay. Next two testifiers. Sarah Shirley in support of Bill 113 and Courtney Rivera in support of Bill 113. 
Aloha, I am Sarah Shirley. Uh, I live in North Kona. I'm from Hilo originally. And I do support this bill, especially the part about prohibiting open air cultivation, propagation development, or testing of genetically engineered crops and plants. I'm not an activist. I'm not paid to be here. I'm a mom. I should be home right now cooking dinner and doing homework, but I chose to be here because I feel passionately about this. It is my children's future, and I feel very strongly about genetically modified crops, especially the open pollinated variety. Um, I could go on and on. I have paperwork upon paperwork about what it does to people, the land. Scientists can't even, can't even agree on the safety of it. Um, I don't think we should be a test lab here on our island. Thank you. Aloha Council, my name is Courtney Rivera. For the fa last six years, I've been restoring our land soil, our intent to start a farm. Heirloom, we believe in conserving and promoting culturally diverse but endangered food crops for future generations by collecting, growing, and sharing heirloom seeds and plants. Heirloom seeds are old, open-pollinated seeds that have been passed down through many generations. By opposing Bill 113, you are denying my ability to grow organic, non-genetically modified heirloom varieties of vegetables and fruits. GMOs operate outside the boundaries of nature. They are the source of expensive lawsuits for farmers. Companies like Monsanto regularly accuse farmers of stealing their seeds even though GMO tainted pollen often lands in an organic farmer's land unknowingly via Mother Nature. This is not a fear, but a fact. No one can guarantee that the plant's pollen wouldn't drift, contaminating conventional and organic crops nearby. The definition of coexist is exist at the same time or in the same place. Please enlighten me. How can I, a non-GMO farmer, coexist with a GMO farmer? I can't. Building a giant glass dome with electronic simulators for wind, ventilation, robotic bees and insects, everything that nature provides to me for free to decrease my chances of cross-pollination is a bit out of my budget. Why do I have to put up with the infringing of my right to grow a non-GMO crop? By not passing this bill, eventually I will not be able to save my seed to grow for the next season because of cross-pollination from contaminating GMOs. As a non-GMO farmer, what I grow does not contaminate what my neighbor grows. As you can see, there is no coexisting with GMOs in our agriculture because I as a non-GMO farmer will not exist. Only the GMO farmers will exist, and where, there's, where is the justice there? Farmers have gotten a lot of bad agricultural advice from experts in the past. I think the consequences of GMOs are unclear, and perhaps the devil we know is better than the devil we don't know. Despite the glut of competing claims about what's best economically and environmentally, not to mention scientifically or morally, you all need to put aside your own conflicted feelings and instead rest your final decision on something more black and white. The people are speaking, and they want you to support Bill 113. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to move over to Kohala. Take two more testifiers, please. Mm -hmm. Our next testifier is Will House, speaking, uh, representing himself, an organic farmer, speaking in support and making comment on Bill 113. Hello, my name is Will House, and I'd like to draw attention to some wisdom available to us from the Native American culture, to sit in a circle to consider the way of the tribe. As each issue affecting the tribe travels around the council circle, the last is that of the women, who hold the interest of the children of future generations. The effect of GMO, the long-term effects of GMO, seem to be in question. I suggest we walk cautiously for the sake of the children and future generations. Let us wait on this issue of GMO till we know for sure, scientifically, it is safe. And we can accomplish the benefits of feeding the hungry, not just feeding corporations with record profits. No reason to move so quickly. Let us walk cautiously. Our next testifier is Joy Vanderwall, representing herself, Paola, 
and Soraya, Soraya. Soraya, her daughters, speaking in support of Bill 113. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Joy Vanderwall, and I am speaking, representing myself and the future generations. Um, I moved to the Big Island in 91. I remember the papaya farms at the time were battling ring bot virus on the skins of the papayas. Um, they're grown for a profit down there, and that's kind of what it seems to be happening now, is that food is more of a profit thing than a survive thing, and it nourish our bodies and keep us healthy. Um, I, I, I pray that you vote for Bill 113, that if we can't get GMO completely out of our hair, that at least, we, at the very least, we can regulate them and require them to label their products, that we have the choice of whether we want to put this unnatural, i.e., not made and provided by God or not. What do we want to do? I would rather pay an extra two dollars for something that is organic, that is non-GMO, than buy in bulk something that's going to put me in the hospital sometime sooner playing into that little conspiracy game. I'm for what is natural. The overwhelming amount of people I hear saying no to GMO, yet our government <coughs> associates keep allowing it to happen. It's off the wall. And I, I pray that you vote yes, Bill 113. Thank you. I'm going to go to Pahoa, but before I do that, I'd like to have Russell Rutterman and Terry Cabrero please come forward. Okay, Pahoa, do you have two more speakers? Terry? Yeah. First of all, we have Ms. Megan Tripp, representing herself. Following her is Ms. Renee Syracuse, representing Malama Okuna, both in support. Thank you. Hi, I'm Megan, um, and I'd like us to paint two pictures together. In the first picture, I'd like you to imagine your favorite scene from nature. Imagine it in your heads right now. <clears throat> so for me, that's the sun rising over the ocean on a crisp summer morning. Lily flowers blooming at midnight while frogs are singing in the background, dolphins spinning, making waves, and my family sitting down to a healthy meal of food that's local, that's imbued with love, um, where we all have the time to appreciate and, and to, um, to live in a style that encourages our health. <clears throat> okay, now I want you to imagine life in an alternate universe where nature has been destroyed. Where the sun is too hot and it's scorching the earth, flowers don't want to bloom because the rain is contaminated, the sun is too hot, you know, the soil is, is full of GMOs. And the dolphins uh, don't imbue you with that, that sense of playfulness and joy that you get when watching them coming with them. I also want you to think about your family and not having anybody because they've, they've, they're gone and cancer has gotten them, mental illness, paranoia, the government is watching us. Um, there's so many things that are going on right now that can lead to this alternate reality. Um, we have both at our disposal, um, and, and really it's up to us. Personal is political, and um, we, we, are, we are infinite intelligence living, living out this life. So please think about your choices. Thank you. My name is Renee Sinokusa, and I'm an organic farmer. I have been gardening since I was five years old, and uh, so that makes 70 years now that I've been either gardening or farming organically. I remember when, uh, before the ring spot virus hit, uh, papaya growers were getting more than $4 a pound. Then. 
the virus hit, and they were told by the Ag Department to cull their fields. I culled mine, and I haven't been able to grow papaya since, because the ones who didn't opted to go with GMOs, and I didn't want my crops contaminated. I wanted to continue being an organic farmer. So they have cost me a lot of money over the years, and they're complaining now that this will cost them. At any rate, the price went down from, from more than $4 to about a dollar a pound that it is now. And this is how we are told that GMO saved the papaya industry. Well, I beg your pardon, but I'm thinking of all these other food crops that we're growing, and ornamental crops as well, and I would hope that we will not be saved by GMOs, because if that's the way they, they save us, we might as well go right down the tubes. So please support Bill 113. It is not my favorite. I would sure like a lot stronger, um, less, less exemptions and a lot stronger position. But hey, it's a start and it's better than what we have now, which is nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Here in Hilo, we'll take Mr. Ritterman. Thank you. My name is Russell Ritterman. I'm testifying on behalf of myself. I thank you, Council, for the opportunity to testify. I urge you to pass Bill 113. The tide of history is moving uh, strongly and swiftly against GMOs. 90% of uh, respondents in many, many polls show that they want some regulation of GMOs. This bill is the regulation that the county can do at this time. Organic is the fastest growing segment of our food industry, and the biggest driver of that growth is avoidance of GMOs. I want to emphasize that this bill is urgent. Some people say delay, but if we delay, I believe that a Monsanto-influenced state legislature might take away our chance to protect our island. I want to mention that the Right to Farm bill does not relate to pesticides or GMOs. It relates to urbanization, and an amendment to include GMOs in the Right to Farm bill has failed so far. Regarding papaya farming, it's clearly and prominently exempted in this bill, so I wonder why the opposition. They say it will taint the crop, but the GMO is the taint, not this bill. Hawaiian papaya for years has been on worldwide boycott lists. The issue now is whether we will add more Hawaii crops to the boycott lists or not. That's the economic effect of this bill. I urge you to stand strong. This is people versus corporations, pure and simple. There's a hundred times more farmers that need this protection than who oppose it. We can always revisit and allow GMO in the future. Now is the only time we have to keep them out. Please err on the side of caution and keep other Big Island crops off the boycott lists. I thank you for the, uh, your bravery and integrity in passing this bill to protect our environment, our food supply, traditional farming, and our people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terry Kerberos, I'm here, and when I say he, we, I'm representing myself and my family, my husband Peter Kerberos, my son-in-law Jeremy Tecurio, my granddaughter Tehani Tecurio, my daughters Amanda Tecurio, Chelsea and Kelsey Kerberos, and the people, my neighbors. I am a Google scientist. I learn about GMOs and its pesticides and insecticides through researching both sides for over two years and counting, in either the wee hours of the morning or late at night, when time is afforded because it's an important enough issue to spend that time checking it out. Bill 113, it has been so compromised, and it wasn't for the good of all, but to pacify, which is not good at all. You say you don't want the biotech companies here. They don't need to walk in the front door or to be present, physically present to do that. They just need a blight or substantial harm via bacteria or virus or whatever. And they're in via their seeds by way of their farmers. Have you seen the history of the big six biotech companies? Their horrific legacy has been nothing but deception, destruction, and death, and it continues on through their GM seeds and chemicals. They are the destroyers. How can one compromise with destroyers? In closing, we support Bill 113 on paper, only because it's better than nothing, I guess, but really, we don't support it because it has been compromised to death. We believe that 
I know that our world is growing smaller as decisions are being made by our government, not by and for the people, but for the sake of greed and filthy gain. It's happening everywhere. We can no longer trust man, nor should we, to make the right and good decisions for us. We must trust in God in all facets of our lives the way it should be. I cannot even begin to imagine the pressure put upon you by both sides, but when doing the good and the right, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Chair. We have another testifier from Waimea. Okay, I'll stop there. Um, in a, after I go to Kona. Um, Kona okay. Thank you. Kona, do you have two more testifiers? Our next two testifiers is uh, Staffy Prades, in support of Bill 113. And then we also have Tracy Esslinger in support of Bill 113. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Stathi Pradas, a 41-year resident of Hawaii. I'm here on behalf of my wife and my three Big Island-born daughters. I am in support of Bill 113. I'd like to uh, share, well, actually, first of all, I, I feel sorry for a lot of the scientists, uh, some with as many as five degrees, and other experts within the Department of Agriculture in Hawaii and in the University of Hawaii system. I feel sorry for them because unfortunately, just like the big chemical uh, pharmaceutical companies took over the medical education of the United States in 1900, where we were an organic herbology, plant-based, natural healing uh, medical process, it's now all drugs. The same thing happened in the 1950s with our agriculture programs taken over by the big seed and chemical companies. And unfortunately, that's who's been training everybody. So these people go to, into the university system. They go into the State Department of Agriculture. They become farm consultants. And so I feel sorry for them. With the exception of one brave man, Dr. Hector Valenzuela, who broke out of the UH system, and is speaking the truth. University of Mexico scientists went throughout Mexico in uh, testing their beloved corn. As you know, Mexico is the heart of corn uh, since the days of the Mayans. They had 13 heirloom strains. And unfortunately, they found that all corn in Mexico is contaminated from GMO cross-pollinization. So I ask you, do not make Hawaii Island an experiment. There is no coexistence. Do not let 1,500 or 2,000 people engaged in GMO agriculture on this island to have 180,000 residents held hostage. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tracy Esslinger. I'm an organic farmer. I farmed organically on the island of Hawaii for 30 years. I also work for Hamakua Sugar. I address each and every council member. We support Bill 113 as it is. We would like it to be more strict, but we will, we will go with this. I urge each and every one of you to realize that we have a great opportunity here. The more organic farmers on this island that are excluded from other transgenic crops that might contaminate our corn or other crops, that if we're the only island in the chain that does not have GMOs, our products will be worth substantially more. I also would like to address the, the, the uh, GMO farmers and ranchers who say that they, they don't want to have to register and pay $100 a year to say that, they're genet that they grow genetically modified crops. As an organic farmer, I pay $450 per year to register as an organic farm. I also label and, and signage my farm to make sure nobody sprays any sort of pesticides or herbicides onto my farm. So any, any rancher that, that's afraid that they might have to put up a sign that says they have GMO crops, we've been doing it for many years. We like to do it. We, we, we advertise that we're an, an organic farm and we do not want herbicides sprayed on our farm. I also address some of the other papaya farmers that say that th that this bill will be the end of farming. It's not the end of farming. It's the beginning of farming. We do not need GMO crops on this island. 
99% of the people that come into this council room to testify are in favor of Bill 113. We urge you to pass this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Why now? Thank you. I'd like to introduce Havani Rio. She's in support of Bill 113 and represents herself. Aloha mai kako. Thank you for meeting today. My name is Havane and I'm in support of Bill uh, 113. I wanted to come in support as a Native Hawaiian woman, Native person that um, was raised here on this island and that knows many organic farmers that are trying to do this purpose in a very righteous way and I'm in a lot of honor of that. And I also wanted to come as a person that has personally worked with Roundup. I worked with Roundup for seven months every day on Kerry Atoll, taking out uh, invasive weeds, and I wasn't educated about how this would affect me and affect my body and affect the landscape. I read through it and I didn't really understand what I was reading because we didn't have internet out there and I couldn't really grasp the terms. And now that I've come home, I see what I was spraying and I see how it has it can totally change integrity of the soil that we're planting in. And so this isn't just about genetically modified foods. This is about changing the integrity of our landscape. And the fact that this is going into our rivers and then into our oceans. And we live on an island surrounded by coral. The biodiversity here is so unique and so incredible. And I don't have facts to share with you today. All I have is my passion, because I know that you guys have heard a lot of facts that prove that GMOs aren't good for our landscape, aren't good for our health, aren't good for our bodies. If you change the genetic integrity of our food, that is changing the integrity of our bodies. And so I'm just saying, please pass this bill. This island can be the change. Mahalo Nui. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. you can turn your microphone off, Donnie. Sorry. 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 I don't think it's off yet. Oh, it's off yet. Donnie, thank you. Okay. Um, Kohala. Yes, our next testifier is Thomas A. Marcello, representing himself, speaking in support, making comment on Bill 113. I wrote a paper specifically on the toxicological effects of genetically modified organisms during my years at Albright College. In this paper, I cited that there was limited information on long-term studies regarding GMOs. This means we are all in the world conducting the largest feeding experiment in history except we are the test guinea pigs. The scientific informa information concerning the potential toxicity of genetically modified plants is extremely limited. Till back 2011. If long-term and multi-generational studies have not been conducted and documented to a large extent, then we cannot rule out the chance that genetically modified foods are overall unsafe and negatively impacting on our health in the long term. As much as I would love to read my entire 20 or so page paper and cite every source in detail, I am limited to stating the obvious. Even if GMOs are okay, Roundup specifically used for genetically modified plants is not. The main ingredient in this herbicide, glyphosate, is a contaminant in all major rivers and has been linked, sparing you the details, to mammalian, endocrine, and reproductive disruption. Furthermore, a report by the Consumer Federation of America Foundation concluded that flexible laws by the FDA, including huge loopholes that could allow potentially dangerous genetically modified food to enter the food supply, but still leave the FDA blameless if that food is found to be unsafe. Smith, 2008, Farber, 2005. While the food and chemical industries claim that genetically modified food is safe, evidence shows otherwise. Scientists running company-funded experience may only observe results that will, that will in the long run help a product past safety and regulatory inspections. The fullest, which I do not have time for, of potential negative health and ecological effects goes on. It would be unethical and unjust to let out such a threat to the general public here in Hawaii. Genetically modified foods have had a very little amount of quality testing performed on them. Murray 2010. 
Before we can fully understand all the facts and realize the full extent of long-term consequences, it is too late, too late to readjust and travel down a different path. The life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness, unleashing a threat however potential that can have a negative long-term effect on the health of human beings here on the island is not righteous. Keep Hawaii pristine and clear of anything not intended by nature itself. Let experimentation occur elsewhere. The people should be able to decide whether to be guinea pigs or not. Our next testifier is Jeremy Graves, representing himself, speaking in support, making comment on Bill 113. Aloha, good afternoon, Council. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. My name is Jeremy Graves, and I'm a traditional food systems farmer in Kohala. And my perspective is that GMO-based farming is, um, the way it's used conventionally is depleting the biodiversity of the planet and the resiliency of the ecosystems on the planet. And so to keep it brief, I want to say that GMO-based farming should not be allowed on the island to support the long-term security of this island and the food systems here. And that's all I will say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, going to Pahoa. Two more testifiers, please. First, we have Ms. Helene Lowe representing herself, followed by Ms. Jane Whitefield, also representing herself, both in support. Hi, I'm Helene Luck. This is the uh, third testimony I'm doing, and I'll try to speak as quickly as I can. Um, PCBs developed by Monsanto are now shown to be in every part of the world and even found their way into the bodies of polar bears and penguins. Monsanto has created chemicals since 1903 and cares nothing about poisoning anybody or anything. It's not about feeding the world, but controlling the world while hiding their patented chemical ingredient. Be real. Even when adding food dye to, to food, it has to be uh, studied and listed on food labels. Organic farmers have more restrictions than Monsanto. Monsanto lobbied and manipulated their lives around and around and through the FDA. Spread, maybe even sneak GMO seeds all over the world, and Monsanto is literally in control of all of us, sounds almost communistic and more than a mortal sin. The corn, soy, and beet silage that is fed to, fed to cows has no nutrients and is sprayed with poisons. Monsanto developed a synthetic growth hormone to increase milk production that causes mastitis, and then antibiotics are needed. Does Monsanto t tell us what poisons are in our milk, cheeses, and meat of animals fed to GMO foods, and if there are problems with the RNA of our systems digesting it? The Kamehameha estate is, is not holding righteous with Bernice Bishop would, would expect Hawaiian leased lands to be used for on Kauai and Oahu. Teach the Hawaiian children how to grow uh, naturally. Mayors, senators, and council members, educate yourselves on this issue and what is being done to our world with this one topic alone. Am I done? <laughs> Aloha, council. My name is Jane Whitefield. I've lived here for about 20 years and I'm in support of Bill 113 and further improvements. Speakers before me have expressed the points that I agree with. I only have one bit of evidence for you to consider. Animals, squirrels, cows, hogs, birds, goats, any animal that eats grain. When given a chance, always choose GMO grain. They haven't read the reports or received any bribes. It's just their way of being. Thank you. Benjamin Cohen. Benjamin Cohen. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, we, Jane, we wanted you to clarify your last statement about the the grains. <coughs> 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 
Animals, when given a chance, a choice, always choose non-GMO grain. Okay, thank you. <coughs> um, okay, thank you very much. Diversity. We're going to come back to Hilo now and um, Malia De Vincent. Hi. Um, Aloha, council members. My name is Malia De Vincent, and I'm here um, to testify for myself and my husband, Kimo, sitting over here. And we support passage of Bill 113 to ban GMOs from Hawaii Island. Our reason for supporting this bill comes from our love of Hawaii and its people. Love to us is when you put your what you love first before yourself and any ambitions you may have. Therefore, I put Hawaii Island before my personal gain because I love the land. I have a small farm. I grow heritage foods. I save seeds. Let's look at the biotech industry. What drives them? Is it the love of the land? All we have to do is look at Kauai's pollution in Oahu and Molokai. Their lands are grossly saturated with poisons. Their waters are toxic. Their reefs are dying. The kids are getting rashes swimming. That doesn't sound like a corporation putting the land before its personal profits. There's no love of Hawaii from them. Let's look at the Hawaii people. Does the health problems from GMO pesticide use show that biotech companies think of the people before themselves? I'm one of those people with the irritable bowel syndrome from eating GMOs. I don't eat in GMO, no problem. Eat GMO, I get sick every time. No, there's no love for the people who work, raise their children, or look for the future grandchildren. They're not looking for them. It's plain to see the biotech corporations do not put others first ahead of their profits. Council members, the line is clear. If you love Hawaii and its people and its land, prove it by supporting Bill 113 and passing this today. Thank you. Thank you. Judith? Okay. Thank you, council people. My name is Judith Mora. I have a huge garden at home, and I eat solely out of my house and a uh, garden, and I only eat organic. Um, because, well, think about Kauai for a minute and the health problems that those people are having right now. That's not here quite yet. Because it is no longer a secret that healthy food creates healthy bodies. That unhealthy foods creates unhealthy nations. That the health of our food is a thriving, healthy home and economy. Today, statistics show that 10,800,000 Americans have cancer. Healthy foods heal and repair the body. Science also says that our digestive system is similar to that of pigs. Pigs raised on a mixed diet of GMO, corn, and soy had higher rates of intestinal problems such as inflammations, ulcers, tumors, thinning and bleeding of the intestine walls, creating all kinds of bleeding stools. Female pigs had larger uterus. What is this doing to our female population? There was no study on male pigs because they were all neutered. But come on guys, imagine. These findings have said countries like Japan, Please South Korea, or finish your I will. China and others seeking for non-GMO foods and seeds from other countries Thank you. to I'm rightly sorry. avoid uh, Madam Chair, your two minutes are up. Madam, Madam Chair, and their human point of order. Um, I've been going back and forth on this, but the only way for this to actually be truly fair, I don't care which side of this equation you're on, two minutes, you're done. Thank you. How, done, whatever side of it you're on, it's the only way to be fair. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving back to Kona. Are there two more testifiers there, please? Our next two testifiers, Mihana Kihoi, in support of Bill 113, and then we have Josephine Kelly Ipio, support of Bill 113. 
Hello. Uh, my name is Mehana Kihoi. I'm a Native Hawaiian and a mother of my 10-year-old daughter, and I'm in strong support of this bill. Um, I think living in Hawaii, we have, we live in one of the most beneficial lands on this earth to be able to grow and cultivate all year round. And we should be thankful for that and blessed because there's not a lot of places you can do that. So, I mean, this isn't an attack on any kind of farmer, but if you can't, if you're saying this just affects the livelihood of your crops and your, just your, your livelihood, then um, if you can't resort to traditional farming methods and natural elements of the earth, like sunlight, rain, soil, seeds, then maybe you shouldn't be a farmer because that's all you need to produce your, your crops and its livelihood. I don't want this to be the legacy that I leave to my daughter. I don't want to fill her body with poison. <coughs> and our state motto, you know, I, I already mentioned this before in the last testimony, is to perpetuate the life of the land in righteousness. GMO production will never be righteous, and it will never perpetuate life to the land. So. I think we just, we're going, we need to go back into time and reserve the traditional methods that our people have already done. Our people use the natural elements, they use fish ponds, they use seasons of the moon to do farming, and I think we need to go back to that. It, everything is already provided for us here, and we need to preserve it and respect it and continue to live life righteously and protect our children. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to protect my daughter. And I won't stop at anything to make sure that she's healthy and living the way that we have lived for thousands of years. So I um, hope that you listen to the people and respect what we're saying, because my heart breaks for Kauai. And I think the world is watching us right now. We need to lead them. Mahalo. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Josephine Kelly Peel, and yesterday I read a letter to the editor in our Kona paper, West Away Today, about GMOs being approved as safe by the FDA, EPA, and USDA. But did you know that even if GMO crops are approved as safe by the FDA, it does not mean that they are in fact safe? Pharmaceutical drugs serve as a good example of this. Did you know that it is not common practice for the FDA to do its own independent studies before the drugs are released into the public. In other words, the FDA puts its complete trust in the clinical studies performed and paid for, paid for by the drug companies, even though many of these studies have been proven to be biased in favor of the drug, and even though the studies try to minimize the negative and many times serious side effects of the drug. So these drugs are released, and you, the public, become the experimental lab rat. The FDA then takes action to limit or black box the drug based on how many hundreds of you die or are seriously harmed by these drugs. If not enough of you die or are harmed, then the drug is deemed safe. And unfortunately, this is exactly how the FDA will prove the safety of the GMO crops. You are the lab rats. This needs to stop. This irresponsible practice needs to stop. And it needs to begin right now here in Hawaii County by passing Bill 113. And just as a side note, before I conclude, um, there was a researcher earlier that I, I listened to uh, today who spoke of golden rice and um, how it was necessary, GMO golden rice, and how it was necessary to do it due to its vitamin A content. And would you believe that just last night I saw a video of a pediatrician in Senegal who had her young, the young mothers 
uh, with their newborn, uh, she had them grind up powder from the moringa tree leaves, feed it to their babies, and and lo and behold, those 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 that powder was so high in vitamin A content that those babies never suffered a vitamin A deficiency. And for those of you who don't know what the moringa tree is, it's the kalamungai tree. All Filipino farmers know, and this is a very valuable tree. Thank you. I'd like to go to Kohala. Are there two more? Yes, our next two testifiers. Our next testifier is Emily Sessoms, representing herself. Susan Lynn and Wes Sessoms speaking in support and making comment on Bill 113. Aloha and thank you for listening. Um, my name is Emily and I'm an aspiring farmer. I recently graduated summa cum laude studying agricultural systems and human rights focusing on the inalienable human rights of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is the ability to choose to consume whatever food you wish to sustain yourself whether you grow it yourself or purchase it. So many people argue economics, let the people decide what to buy, organic or not. But we know that government subsidies flood the market with GMO crops, lowering the price but hiding the cost, and they are often not labeled. Of course those who are financially constrained will act economically to feed their family. It is not a choice. It is a fight against starvation and it is leading to obesity, diabetes, and other health issues. There has been no long-term safety testing on the effects of GMOs on human health, and the studies that have been conducted have been by the very agencies that benefit from their continual use. GMO crops engineered are resistant to the corporation's own chemical brands, which they then sell for profit. But you've heard all this. You know the arguments. I can cite scientists. I can cite farmers and par politicians. America talks about being a country of innovation, and GMOs have been reduced down to an amazing scientific peak, just as the atomic bomb was a spectacle of man's creativity until we saw the consequences. Allow us um, food sovereign. Hawaii deserves more than that. Let us be the change we wish to see, but most importantly, help those who don't realize the harm that they cause. Don't just outlaw GMOs here. Provide support for the people that feed us, including the farmers that currently use GMOs. They have families too. Help us move towards a more holistic and healthy system, and let us be the change that we wish to see. Mahalo. Thank you. Um, before the next speaker starts, I just wanted to make an announcement that um, we're going to take a recess in a few minutes um, right after I do the, finish the, um, the next speaker and then the two in, he, in Hilo. Then we'll take a five minute recess. And um, just so that it is fair, I, I know you're all trying to summarize and, and do your statement in two minutes, but and I don't like to cut you off in the middle of a sentence, but when the, you hear the sound, please just either finish that sentence or stop. Okay, thank you. You can continue in um, Kohala, please. Our next testifier is Drew Doty, representing himself, Mike, Jill, Katie, and Janice Doty, speaking in support and making comment on Bill 113. Hello, thank you for hearing me. I'm from Nebraska, Virginia, and Colorado, all respectively, and I recently graduated from Rollins College in Orlando, Florida. I've been studying food systems around the world for about four years now, and I recently moved to North Kohala to work on an organic, completely non-GMO farm. And I have to say that the past two months have been the happiest of my life. And I can only the reason I can say that is because the work that I do every day, I know what I'm doing is actually benefiting this earth. My degree led me to realize that my generation is faced with a world that's got a lot of problems and that a lot of the life that I've been brought up into is actually extracting from this earth rather than cultivating it and building it up. So I've come to know North Kohala as my home in a short two months and like I said the only reason I can do that is because I know the work I'm doing here is good, it's good for the earth. So I'm in support of Bill 113 because of this and I hope will vote in favor of it as well. But I also hope that you realize, as Emily said, that this is only the first step. Should this bill be passed, this is going to require a huge scale of education to cultivate a new generation of farmers on how to 
cultivate the Big Island without herbicides and pesticides and non gmos Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also needed to announce that um, Chairman Jay Yoshimoto has joined this meeting. And over to Pahoa. Do you have two more testifiers? Uh, yes, we have Mr. Robert Patrici representing Kunafon Alliance. Will be followed by Ms. Karen Ashley representing herself, both in support. Aloha, Council. Uh, my name is Robert Petrici. I'm representing the Puna Pono Alliance. I'm an organic farmer in Pohiki. Um, from what we heard and what I've seen in the prices here, the GMO uh, has already hurt the papaya farmer. He's getting a dollar a pound as opposed to four dollars a pound now. How is that helping? Uh, as an organic farmer, uh, I can't grow papayas in Pohiki because I'm surrounded by GMO papaya. So basically, that's a crop that uh, I'm restricted from growing under the current law. Um, you, you know uh, that the uh, the prices for GMO products around the world are low and they're being rejected by 60 plus countries now. There's restrictions all over the place. You're going to damage the agricultural markets if you don't have to. So we have to do something to keep the GMOs out of Hawaii County, at least for uh, the time being, until some more of this stuff is looked at. And when you talk about science, you know, we heard that same science uh, for asbestos, EDT, tobacco, dioxin, and on and on and on. And, you know, these products are safe, and we use them, we put them, in, we put them into our communities and into our cities, and look what happens. And, and then 10, 20 years later, well, the science wasn't so good. I think the GMO science is the same. Uh, I don't think the GMO science is good. It's certainly not. And it's the kind of thing that you can't put back in the bottle. Once you let the GMO genie out of the bottle here on this island for papaya, say, or whatever whatever it is, corn, you can't, you can't take that back. Um, over 90% of the, the testimony you've received has been in favor of this bill. Do you represent us or not? Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. My name is Karen Ashley, and uh, I'm a 32-year cancer survivor. Eleven years ago, my daughter went to medical school and put me through uh, on a completely uh, GMO-free diet. Um, and uh, the blood in my urine went away, my high cholesterol went away, my arthritis went away. Uh, uh, and um, I lost uh, 40 pounds, and I've kept it off 11 years. I haven't even needed to take an aspirin in 11 years except to get some teeth removed. Uh, I, I grew a completely organic garden for my landlord in Molokai, and um, when um, the, one of the Monsanto managers quit his job in Molokai, and the Department of Agriculture also moved out, um, two years later, my animals were um, all murdered, and I was shot by a Monsanto employee while mowing the front lawn in Molokai. I live here on the Big Island to escape that, but I can see the problems are the same here. And um, uh, Monsanto do not play in none of the GMO companies. They're just chemical waste disposal agencies for the chemical companies. And we really need to be looking at Wall Street and the Dow Exchange and uh, why um, they are um, um, oh okay why, why they're dumping their chemical waste we have the highest cancer rate for turtles on earth the highest leukemia rate for babies on earth don't you care about people please show you do vote against genetically modified organisms thank you here in Hilo um are you Deborah? Uh, why do I hit the My name is Deborah Welch and I stand in support of 100% ban. Is your microphone on? <laughs> oh, my name is Deborah Welch and I stand in support of 100% ban of GMO crop going on the island of Hawaii and I support this bill. I'm a volunteer for the Time to Show GMO campaign and my task has been to focus on scientific research that proves safety. I've been investigating the website that I was directed to by CTAR, our County Agricultural Extension Office. 
The site is entitled Biofortified. It is a site published, uh, pr published by GMO advocates. It lists 2,300 GMO studies. From our looking into the site, the longest study GMO advocates have to offer, testing the safety of feeding GMO to animals, is 90 days. I want to repeat that statistic. The longest study GMO advocates have to offer, testing the safety of feeding GMO to animals after 20 years of being on the market seems to be 90 days. <coughs> Time to Show GMO is a public awareness campaign. We are encouraging Hawaii residents to come to our website and answer a brief survey. The survey asks, after 20 years of being in our grocery stores, how long of a scientific study would you hope to find showing that GMO foods are safe to eat? Our results so far are that people are stunned that 30 days represents a long-term study. Based on my experience today, the industry will spend more money on t-shirts and radio ads than it will to fund one single long-term study. Maybe because when scientists start to look at pigs fed 100% GMO for six months, things start to fall apart radically. Read America's Two-Headed Pig. And I ask if the industry was proud and confident, why wouldn't they be the first in line wanting a long-term study? They're bluffing, that's why. I ask each council person, is a 90-day long-term study sufficient to put your minds at ease? Thank you. Michelle, thank you for waiting. Aloha. My name is Michelle Prevost, and I am representing the Mother Earth and all of humanity. I am a minister, therapist, and a farmer. I support Bill 113. I have lived in Hawaii for 20 years, and I love the Aina. It just makes me feel so sad to hear all this. I live on the Hamaku Coast, where 300 plus acres of GMO corn are being grown as we speak. We have a 20-acre farm where we are committed to growing everything as natural as possible. To me, Mother Nature knows best. I could go on with what you've already heard, because everything I have on my paper is what you've already heard, pretty much. But all I'm going to say is that I do really believe that the trend of the future is healthy organic food. I, I've been eating organic food since I was 20, and now I'm 58, and I'm a vegetarian. And I, back in the day when I was 20, there was, only, there was very few people who shopped that way. And now, when I go into the health food store, I see so many people who want to become more healthy. And I think we could be a shining example of what that is here on the Big Island, and I pray that you will consider no GMOs. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a five minute recess. We'll be back.